Adams continuing with the foundation, digging the foundation uh, for the small retainer wall that's going to run along the back to roughly where the wheelbarrow is. Uh, we've got a we've got a mix on now, so we're going to try and get that concrete in before it it rains. The weather's not looking too good at the moment. It, potentially, it could rain, but we want to get that concreted so we can get the block work on that side finished tomorrow. And obviously, you can see how we've got on with the block work on here. So that's at the right height. But the other thing, of course, is that we know that the foundation of this wall is a lot lower uh, than what you can actually see there. So you're not going to have any uh, of the ground drying up above. So nice meandering wall, wrapped around the back of the deck and over there. And uh, there you go. Yeah. We're back and uh, again, it's, uh, it always looks like rain, doesn't it, all the time. This is the country we live in. Let's go and have a look at what we've been doing. Right, I'm going to jump over this side of the wall so you can actually see it. We've got this small retaining wall here. Because this is going to be a plant and pocket. And some people say, well, that's a bit excessive, but I don't think it is. What you've got to remember is that um, there is, I've said this before, there's uh, Dixonia Antarctica that are going to go in here. That's the New Zealand tree fern, and they've got like maybe about a six foot span, maybe more. So, what you've got to remember is, is that it's going to sit in this area, and then Tony's going to, our client's going to underplant it. This wall's got to be rendered, but before we render this, we're going to have to uh, tank the back of the wall. Tank the back of the wall, and the reason for that is that we don't want moisture ingressing through the wall and discolouring the render. Come have a look at this side. Well, we're on the burnt wood, the thermal wood, the shosugi band. It's not yaki sugi. Um, we're on the decked area, and we've got the timbers and a diagonal. As, as we worked out that these are out of 45 to that fence, aren't they? Yeah. Which just gives it another dimension. So the wall wraps right the back here. Okay. We've got a 60, 65 mil gap going along on there, and what we're going to have, we're going to be able to render there, but also we're going to have a small gap so we can have some gravel going down there. So if any water coming off the wall, it goes straight down and not sitting on the end grain. So there's good aeration going on the end grain of, of the timber. And remember, so if we just hang on a sec, that's the profile. This is the profile of the decking. This is the profile of the decking. This is a six by three and we burnt it. It's tantalized and it looks great. And the grain is really popping. So there we are. Um, so we've got the wall sweeping around here. So we'll come round on this side and then the plants are the wall then is going to run at the same angle as the decking, as a diagonal, which that will have some unity, that will work together. So there's a fair bit of amount of preparation and soil that's got to go on in, uh, in, in that side, but as we're coming across, we can tidy up the garden as we go in, and it's good for the client to actually see then, they can get a feel of, of what's going on. And then what I was going to say, on top of this wall, we are going to have a Brazilian slate, 3CM coping stone that's going to go on here and we're going to cut all those pieces individually yeah individually and then we are going to have a ball nose on the front aren't we we are yeah i think we will also on there have a look here what we've got here there is a manhole here so we have to extend that we can't get rid of that we can't hide it we need to know where it is so that's going to come up and probably tony will put a pot on there in amongst the plants which you won't see. So we are moving out this part of the garden. This isn't a necessarily a massive garden, but there are a lot of things going on. It's not really busy, but there are a few things going on. We've got the patio, we've got the wall, the planted pockets, 
obviously the fence, we're using the fence as a backdrop to the plant. We've got the decked area and then there's going to be planted pockets within this area and a stepping stone path cutting through the grass. And the reason for that, you don't want a solid path because it just look like a roadway. We need to start breaking up the expanse of timber and porcelain and paving and walling in amongst all the plants. The beauty about this garden is Tony is a real plant person. So eventually we start turning this soil over. Once we take the back of the wall, we can start moving the plants from that side of the garden over here. And then you can start placing them out and it gives them a little bit of time as the garden's growing to see what's happening. What Ryan and I were talking about earlier, um, we're building this wall around here now and a lot of people are always going to say, well, you should build the wall first before you, you build the deck. Um, well, I don't necessarily agree with that. It's a big old decking area and has to be put in place. People ask now about whether we can, where we need to protect it. The fact is when we burn it with the Shosugi band method, it really, it really hammers the surface. So what we can do is we can clean this off after and of course, burn it again, give it another light burn again, which we will do right, within places that we need to touch up. But the most important thing is today is while it's not raining, we get this water. You'll be able to see it in this video 
We're going to use the TC125, that's that little plunge saw, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, from ITS, and it cuts at an angle as well. Yeah, yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, like, you know, we've got so many tools available to us now these days to what we had in the past. And, um, but that TC125 is a brilliant saw, and it's a track saw as well, isn't it? It is, yeah, it is a track saw. What's the beauty of running things on a track saw? It's just one continuous straight line. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't mess up, you can't be a mill out here, two mils out there. It's We're cutting through 20 mil porcelain, aren't we? Yeah. And um, what do you think, how many passes we should have? It's going to definitely be a few passes. I know, in, like in previous videos, you've done it in one before, but then you've worked with so many different types of porcelain, some's better than others, some, you know, and you can do it, but... It's not always the same practice for every porcelain, is it? No, and to be fair, I think it's better, it's, it's less stress on the, uh, the blade and the, the, the machine. Yeah. To do it that way, it's just better all around, a couple of passes. Some people say, well, you can just use a, an angle grinder. Yeah, well. Some people aren't that skillful enough, are they, to actually use the angle grinder? Yeah, there's that as well. Yeah, but even it, for me, I need, I need it. I think the thing about the track, it does keep it lined up nice Yeah, it's just neat. perfect in line, isn't it? Yeah. But there's no variations, there's no... There's as long as you get the measurements right in it. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Leave them to me then. So there we are, there's our mark, that's our cut line, and we've got that parallel off the fence. We don't know whether the fence line's running squarely out, but Ryan, I think, uh, Ryan is putting the old uh, Ruby, this is for the TC125. This is the track he's getting out there now. The TC's getting out his sniper weapon there. There we are, look. No, this so he can do his calculations for the yeah. window. Man. It's been a while, I can't remember that. Yeah. Somebody in the island's going to ask him who's that. Anyway, there's the TC125 there in the box. Let's open the box. Let's have a look. There's nothing better than opening the box. Let's have a look. What we got in? This is a cracking little saw, isn't it, Roy? Yeah, it's cool. There we are. There's a ruby. There we are. Roy needs those. That keeps it in position. There we are. Yeah, yeah, it will be. I have got another another one now. Oh, we've got three there, haven't we? You've got three? Yeah, I've been given another one as well. Yeah. So that's quite easy, isn't it? No rust, either, is it? No rust. No, to be fair, it's pretty good. Isn't it? Really? 